Hello folks, and today I will be showing you how I made this piece over here, the uh, the pirate cave, or whatever it is that I decided to finally call it. Um, and I thought I would go through this piece because I'd been going through a bit of a phase of struggling to start a painting lately, and I'm I'm quite pleased with it. So uh, I see I'm coming off the back of a of a bad run of bad paintings. <clears throat> Sometimes, I don't know if you get this, but you feel like uh, you're just getting worse or you're just stuck making paintings that really are bad. But particularly if you know that you're capable of doing good stuff, you've done work before that has been well received. So you know you're able to do it. Um, and then you just create garbage and <laughs> the worst, though, is when you, you're you creating the garbage and you think it's great and it turns out to be garbage. That's the worst. Um, so I want to talk, uh, walk you through how I made this painting in steps, um, in particular focusing on the start, but I want to talk about the issue of what, what do you do? Um, not even, not so much that I have like a, a great solution, but like we, I feel like, we need to talk more about like failure and fail failures, failed paintings, and um, we get this impression. I know that I've been greatly inspired when I've seen good artists talk about their struggles. Um, it makes me feel a little bit, a little bit more comforted uh, because we we just edit out whenever we put our artwork out there. And we become successful or more successful than we were. <clears throat> we just edit out the maybe not even because we want to come across as good, but just because you kind of, um, you only really want to show your best side. You only, you're told, you know, you put your best work in your portfolio. <clears throat> so um, we sort of feel like when we suck, nobody else does. Um, so let's get into that whole discussion. Um, so it's now like early Feb 2022 in 2021, I did some of my least successful artwork and maybe I did like one piece that was, I'm, I can't, well, this is the other thing. How do you define success? Unfortunately, I tend to be defining it as how many likes it gets on art station. And it's, it's the only kind of metric that you have really though. I mean, it might be that you make something and put it on art station and it does great and it maybe shouldn't have but all we know really is it did well it got a lot of likes i will say though that if you're struggling to define what a successful piece is you put it on art station it does well you put it somewhere else and it does well there i'd say more than one platform that equals a, a successful piece a piece that people like and enjoy looking at um so with that in mind <clears throat> um I would say that the pieces that I uploaded uh, throughout 2021, there was a lot that just bombed on every platform. And that's a key indicator that, uh, I don't know, something ain't going right. So this year, I'm promising myself to do better and just absolutely will not accept uh, substandard work. So there I go and upload my first piece in January, and it bombs completely. <laughs> and it's like, oh my God. So I then decided, and this is where this painting comes in, to uh, just start sketching. And I create some just awful stuff that, you know, again, I'm trying to just say, well, you know, I'll do a sketch and I'll upload that. And, and you know, it'll only take like a day to do the sketch. And maybe that will generate some interest. Uh, and it turns out that it didn't. So, um, so I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do we start a painting? Like, because some, sometimes it's just like, you're trying to come up with something from nothing, from scratch, and you start doodling in Photoshop, and all that comes out is garbage, or the same stuff that you've seen a thousand times, you know? Um, so I was starting to paint just from scratch, uh, figuring out, should I start with lines? Or should I start with um, with blocking in large shapes? And 
both methods were getting me kind of nowhere. And then I thought, hmm, I'm going to look at some videos of other people and how they've started. And I looked at some John Park uh, videos, tutorials, and the first thing that I saw, I only got a couple of minutes in, and he started with a photo as a base. And I was like, yes, uh, I'm trying to get away from 3D as the thing <clears throat> because it's uh, it takes too long and it can hinder your progress because you can end up uh, downloading just everything that you need and then all of a sudden you, you haven't created anything, which is dangerous for client work because every client that comes along will say, we need this specific thing and you can't just download it. So, uh, and it's also, you know, can take a, a good few days to, to build everything, render it, paint over it. So I'm trying to get quicker, be less reliant. Uh, and also what I found is if you start from 2D, which is what this piece here is, um, you you have just this flow. You can really flow into a piece and be really creative. And I find that 3D can limit you uh, in like ways that you can't even imagine. Um, so I really want to get my 2D workflow going. Uh, so what I did was I'm going to start uh, by showing you the, like the, how this started, this piece here. So it started out with a picture of a cave. Uh, I was just going through some of my uh, inspiration folder and I found this photo. And um, I thought, okay, cool. Uh, I'll start with this photo of a cave. And you can see here where it cropped. Do, do, do. Like about here even. It was just a square picture. And I thought it'd be cool if there was, if we were looking up at a big skull. Um, so I made the the piece wide and then I started to uh, destroy it using um, a Photoshop filter, which is, uh, it will be in the filter gallery. Let's bring that over here. And I think it's the dry brush. So even here, you can see it working within this piece. So we turn it on and off before and after. And you can see it just kind of looks a bit more painterly. It's not great because it can have these strange edges. There's other stuff as well. There's paint dorps. And you want to have a big brush size so that it gets rid of that detail. A bit of sharpness in there. So that can work. But it can be, again, have these weird sharp edges. Palette knife. That can sometimes work too. You've got to get your brush stroke size right. So um, either way, I'm trying to, it's, it's good to just kind of destroy the photo a little bit. So that's this phase. Um, I added this mound of rubble. I thought there'd be maybe rocks leading up here. Um, and I think this is a separate um, texture here. And then I started to colorize it. Um, I put in perhaps uh, a texture over the top and use saturation or something like that, and it suddenly gave me this green or blue. I thought, ah, cool, like a weird, mysterious blue green cave thing. And then I realized that I'd made one of the key mistakes uh, in starting with a photo, and that is um, you get wedded to the photo and you get locked to the photo. Now, you know, you're creating a scene, you want to create it. You know, you want to have a, a lot of say in the composition. And you don't want the photo to be telling you what the composition is. <clears throat> um, something that I, a big mistake that I start, I did in the beginning, um, which was I'd get a photo and just slightly alter it. And there's, it, it does not work well because there's no way that a client, I always relate this to client work. And the client is going to come to you and say, hey, I need this piece doing, and you're going to have, like, the perfect photo as for the job. So uh, so I realized that I probably wasn't going to get the very best composition out of this um, if I just stuck to the photo. So I blurred the hell out of it and thought, this is what I want to do. This is the composition that I'm creating from my head. I did use, I got a... I think this was a 3D model of an actual skull on uh, Sketchfab that I just cut out 
and I because you can you know change the angle and so I just cut it out and locked it on there and I figured it would be a skull on the top of a, a pile of treasure here I can show you my inspiration board this is my pure F board always have one of these in every project that I do even if it's a little, little sketch I've got some Pirates of the Caribbean stuff I found this from a Sea of Thieves concept art or something um, and generally just some parody stuff paragraph and then just some ideas for I didn't end up going with any of this but I liked this idea of starting it painterly but uh, I'm not quite there yet um, so yeah that was just a reference for the treasure and the composition and the, the lighting so uh, then I started to light it so starting with the skull darken it down top light um, <clears throat> and then you know just trying to get the right levels so that's a bit better so you can see from here it was a little bit ambiguous and this gives us a more definite I, I, from here once I've got the line work in uh, so yeah the line work versus the straight blocking I feel like lines give you just this extra it's always a difficult thing to figure out um, because with lines it's just completely flat but with shapes you get a sense of depth but with the shapes it's like this very subtle issue of you have to fill in the shape which takes time and that takes you out of the flow whereas if you're using lines you, you're just flowing and flowing and flowing <clears throat> and it's very fast and it's important to flow and it's important to be fast because you need to be uh, making so many quick changes and changes and changes because as you do one thing it affects the other and as you do change that thing it affects the other and you're having to be as simultaneous as you can because it's all happening like you're having to juggle like several things all at once the composition foreground midground uh, shape you know sometimes you're like oh, crap, can I even draw a rock you spend ages drawing this rock and it's like doesn't even fit into the composition so you have to really be uh, flowing from a nothing empty void into a crystallizing something and I feel that sometimes line work can really help with that but like I say it's a little bit flat it's a little bit abstract and you can sometimes end up with something that looks nice as lines but not so great with when filled in so lines first then we start to block so as you can see the mound here and then some vague shapes here I'm just using these big uh, brushes from Greg Wachowski um, which are really nice and sort of like textury and then I start getting to work on re refining the skull because it was a bit dark and I needed to have that green bounce light and so now we're on to that mound where I Use some rock textures, some skull photographs of mountains of skulls, and some and a photo uh, like a little photograph that I found on Google Images of some coins that I duplicated and duplicated, and then uh, masked them back in. And this was a, a struggle at this point because um, you're dealing with a like a mound of stuff, gold and rocks, and it's potentially going to be messy and it has to be organized so I and it like you go from here to here here I was worried I was like I don't how am I going to do this because it really is looking like it could just be a noise so I looked to the area to the hour left of the skull and figured I needed some big straight clean simple blocky shape so I scoured through my uh, rocks texture photos folder and found just the right one clean that up a bit so even even the white of those bones i found a bit distracting 
Then I figured I'd go with the waterfall behind the skull to make it pop. And that beach, little beachy sandy area to the left is like a diagonal to keep us pushing in. Kind of balances out with the, like here, balances out with this line here. We have a classical one third composition. And then I kind of wanted just a bit of like water in the foreground. Taking away that left highlight at the bottom left, taking that away uh, so that we push in. And I was just being so careful at this stage. I could feel when I was doing this, the experience of the last few years of polishing my understanding of how to make things read coming through is just, and this is what's interesting to articulate that people often don't understand. Like when you're getting better, what is that? What's happening? What's it look like? And I try to be as conscious as I can. Like, am I getting better? What am I employing now that I never would have? I could feel that here. I could feel the sense of uh, a finer degree of control over this skull and uh, mounted of gold area. So many subtle decisions are happening that you, at first, when you're learning about digital art, you don't really take pay much attention to. You're like, yeah, whatever. It doesn't really matter. There's a lot of that going on, I find. I find it in my own head, anyway. Somebody would say, oh, edges are important. I bet, eh, you know, values are important. Well, that's just how things look in black and white. Just little things like that. And when somebody paints over your piece, they change it in subtle ways. And you're like, surely my piece needs more of a fundamental change than that. And often it is these tiny changes that make a huge difference. So like from there to there, for example, we've now got this nice soft blue rim light on the skull. And I've put some dusty, I don't know whether you'd call it smoke, but just some, some dusty volumetrics right in front of the skull. I deliberated over that for a long time, trying to figure out if it was the right move or not. Um, because here it reads really solidly, but then you get this nice sense of like the light hitting the particles. Uh, I'm also changing the saturation on that gold a bit and possibly adding some extra little sparkles onto the gold. Added some shapes to the, um, the silhouette of that mound, give it a bit more interest tweaking with the values of the waterfall, trying to get this every, I'm looking at every part of the skull and making it stand out as much as I can. So um, the pirate guys, always a challenge, always a challenge. I started out spending like a couple of hours, I think, noodling with, you know, a, like a, just a brush trying to get like a, a silhouette fr freehand. Wasn't working, wasn't working, wasn't working. St characters are just not my forte. So this was a semi-cheat. I basically got, um, went through my pirate reference folder and I found some stuff along these lines from Assassin's Creed. And I would <clears throat> um, use the silhouette. So you can see that this guy here is that silhouette there. And then take other, because this is quite useful actually, you get, if you can get silhouette correct, it looks good. You can put a lot in there that you can mess around with and get away with. Because um, the silhouette just keeps the form nice and readable. So you could take a, I mean, I've, this, I've seen me before take a silhouette like this and paste a picture of somebody who's facing the wrong way, like they're facing away and they're, the silhouette's facing away, but the character's facing the camera. But you just mask it in and it just kind of works. So um, I would take different photos of different people and place them over these characters. We'll get back to those later. Just wanted to make sure that they read, they would read well. So just doing some peripheral stuff now. Just painting in some of those rocky areas. 
and it's at this stage I start on the characters and the parrot. I wasn't sure, I thought there needs to be some interest in the top here because it just feels like we go either out of the frame and it's not much up here to balance what's going on down here. And there we have some of the clothing on the, the pirates. And I made my made up my own hat so they weren't just Assassin's Creed hoods. Um, finishing up some of the pirate stuff here. This is actually from a medieval uh, photo ref. I just thought, yeah, it'll work. I, again, whenever I put in the texture, I'm usually using some filter to destroy it a bit so that it's not sharp. Um, I quite liked the foliage behind the skull here, but then when I compared it, if I, I was regularly standing way back and looking at this before, after, and I feel like it loses something. I did some foliage to the foreground, a little bit up here too, very subtle, an extra parrot. Um, and some foliage here. Always good to go back and forth, back and forth, just making sure that you're improving on each one. Next one, this was a fairly significant change. Got rid of the, the tree in the background and punched up the um, the overall levels. I, what I did was create a new layer, put black in it, and choose color as the uh, transfer mode. And that really gives you a solid read on what the values look like. Then, with it in black and white, I'll change the levels. And it's surprising how much, you know, when you look at it in black and white, you really get an idea of, oh, no, this needs more contrast. Then you take the black and white off and you see how it looks underneath. And that was, and so what we have here is a result of that. Before, after, you see it slight punches through the values and the, the clarity looks a lot better. Um, adding hats to the pirates again using my trick of going to Sketchfab, finding a tricorn hat, rotating it the right way, cutting it out, pasting it in. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm getting close now to the end. Added a little parrot on the uh, parrot on the pirate. Uh, now I'm starting to feel like I've inadvertently made a bit of story because we have two flying parrots two par pirates without birds, and then the third one with. So perhaps they, those birds are from those pirates. Pirates. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, it's um, in terms of this, uh, like making a successful piece, storytelling is key. And um, sometimes you can be not as good an artist, but a good storyteller, and you can have a piece be more successful than somebody who's a good artist, but not very good at storytelling. So that's something to, to really bear in mind. If um, you feel like you're struggling and you're like, oh man, I can't keep up with these artists. They're so good, their brushwork and their values and their composition is just so perfect. Well, um, start thinking about what, what story and what emotion is in your piece, you know? Um, if people can think that something's going on and be intrigued, that's an aspect that doesn't really come through within the realms of edges and values and all that kind of stuff. And that was inadvertent because at first that pirate with his arm up here is supposed to have been holding a sword behind his back. And I just thought, Meh, maybe with his arm looking like that, maybe he could have a par on there. So does it work? I don't know. And then just adding some extra treasure to the mound and another bit more. So this bit I'm trying to just fine tune. I think this is the last bit. Yeah, this is the last phase. And I struggled a little bit, should, you know, trying to figure out, should I, behind the waterfall, should it be dark at the bottom or light? Um, if it's darker, the rim light from the skull on the left side pops more. Um, and it is still up for grabs in my head as to whether that works or not. I feel like it was quite bright behind that skull. And when it's, I don't know if it makes much of a difference, but if you go before and after, you'll notice that your focus goes, pushes from the left of the skull, maybe towards the top of the skull. Four, after, four, 
after. I'm not sure even now like which is the absolute best. But um, I'm going to probably say the second one. But <laughs> this is the thing, you get like this level of subtlety. You sometimes can't tell the difference. But there is a difference and uh, you, uh, you can't underestimate. Like something like that and that could make the difference between, I don't know, a lot of likes because it just hits you subtly. Uh, something about it, perhaps it doesn't, perhaps you're not conscious of it, but you just see a piece and you go, ah, that reads better. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. I think that's the, um, the final piece. And then I think I would have just um, flattened the whole piece and smudged a few areas here and there. I always do that when a piece is finished, just checking out any uh, any edges that need to be sorted out because uh, you don't want any edges to be distracting and, and, and hard when they should be a little bit softer. Um, and a little bit of a sharpen, just again, subtle over the... Over the uh, skull, I've just placed a little sharpen. Maybe over this bit here. And that's all I think. Maybe a little bit here. Okay, so uh, I'd be interested to hear about your struggles. Do you go through the same thing when you're like um, feeling like you you haven't created a good piece in a while? You feel something feel like you're never going to create another good piece again. Um, it is a tricky one, and I've really struggled i mean i um every every year i you know will talk about the idea of just giving up because it becomes so frustrating when you just feel like you're not getting anywhere and um you make some horrible horrible blunders nobody seems to be talking about it and i kind of want to make my youtube channel about talking more about that and um making people feel like it's okay to be having these mistakes and to be struggling like this and that uh, people who seem like they're doing well might not be um, and really pointing pointing out that it is way more difficult than people think to, to be successful at this. Uh, and it might seem like something really successful and they might not be, I don't know, it's a difficult industry and so I'm all about letting people know that because I didn't know that before I got in. This is why is um, I did not appreciate just how difficult it is. It's been 10 years now. I still don't feel like I've <clears throat> properly broken into the industry yet. Um, I, I feel like I'm always close though, which is kind of a tease. Um, and so I also want to make sure that I'm uh, cataloging, chronologuing, my progress so that maybe someday I'll be able to look back and say, oh, that's where I was and here's where I am now. Ever the struggle continues and uh, I'm always trying to keep the goal in mind uh, because it's extremely important to fulfill your deep seated goals. So let me know in the comments what you think of all of that and if you have anything to say about it and share experiences that you've had and any struggles. So I hope this gave you some idea as to workflow and all that kind of stuff. Um, give me a like if you got something out of the video and I'll see you again. Cheers.